Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dory and this channel is all about hiking gear, hiking tips and tricks and everything you need to know about hiking. I hope I'm not distracting you too much with this view today because we are going to talk about hiking the Bibbulmun Trek and how to plan your hike on the Bibbulmun Trek. All right, let's go. So while I'm still in Agnes Water, Queensland, I thought it would be a good idea to talk to you guys about hiking the Bibbulmun Trek and how you actually plan your hike. And um, I've done the Bibbulmun Trek last year. I've only done half of it. Unfortunately, I had to quit the hike because I, I needed to go back to work. Um, but I am planning to do the whole thing um, probably, I don't know, next year because as you know with COVID in Australia you're never too sure when you can travel and when you can't and for now I plan to stay in Queensland for a few more months. It's beautiful, nice and sunny and there's plenty of hiking. So I'm going to give you an overview of how to plan your Bibbulmun Trek hike and we're, we're talking pretty much about doing the whole thing. Um, and over the next few weeks I'm going to do um, separate videos on like how to plan your food, um, like how do, you, how do you send your parcels and all that stuff. So I'm going to do separate videos on those topics and this video will be an overview of the Bibbulmun Trek and what you need to do to plan it. Alright, so what do you need to know about the Bibbulmun Trek? Well, first of all, the Bibbulmun Trek is a 1000 km hike or thereabouts between Perth and Albany and it takes about 6 to 8 weeks to complete. Now some people will tell you that it only takes about 30 days um, and you can do it in, in a lot quicker than 8 weeks but I would recommend to take it all in and just enjoy your hike while you do it and therefore like the recommended time is between 6 to 8 weeks. The Bibbulmun Trek has these signs called the Woggles and they're not snakes and they're not warnings for snakes they're actually the rainbow serpents, which are a symbol from the Aboriginal Dreamtime. So you follow the woggle all the way from Perth to Albany or Albany to Perth. How do you get to the start of the Bibbulmun Trek? There's two terminals. There's the Northern Terminal and the Southern Terminal. Obviously the Northern Terminal is in Perth, it's in Kalamanda. And how you get there is you either get a lift or a taxi or Uber. Um, or you can take the bus as well. So the transport uh, bus goes to goes from the city to Kalamanda. If you're visiting from overstate, that might be a good option, but um, it's about, I, I would say, half an hour from the city, so getting an Uber is not a bad option. Or you can always get a lift from a friend, right? So the bus does stop at the terminus, and around the terminus you have a few shops that you can still have some lunch or breakfast at, and there is a calls to do your last minute shopping, so there is no need to um, to panic if you forgot something. In, in Albany, uh, if you want to start from Albany, you can take the Trans WA bus that takes you from Perth to Albany and um, the bus stops at the visitor center and that's also where the southern terminus is located right now. So they've recently moved that and um, yeah, so it's really easy accessible and because you're at the visitor information center, you can already check in. And, um, and sign the guidebook. If you plan on doing sections on the Bibbulmun Trek, you can always find access points on the Bibbulmun Trek website, bibbulmuntrek.org.au um, and there's, there's a map that you can uh, fully zoom out and it will give you all the access points um, and it will be displayed like red car or green car and the red car means that the, the track actually crosses one of the sections or a, tr a street, whatever. Um, so you can you can just start walking from there and if you have two cars you just park the other car at the other end where you want to stop and um, that way you can plan your section hike as well. Um, I will do a separate video about the most popular section hikes on the Bibbulmun Trek and um, also the most beautiful ones but I'm gonna give you a hint right now. For me Pemberton to Northcliffe is absolutely stunning for a three-day hike. It is fantastic and especially if you're a beginner it's a really good way to get into hiking. So also if you want to do section hikes you can do from town to town you don't necessarily need to look for access points but for example like I said Pemberton to Northcliffe you can leave one car at Northcliffe and the other one in Pemberton or you can leave a car in Northcliffe and then you can come back uh, on the Trans WA bus back to your car. Okay so there's a lot of options um, it takes a bit of planning but the Bibbulmun Trek is fairly accessible to the public. And the access points you can also use to do food drops. 
and um, yeah if you if you have like a, a food package that someone can drop off for you then you don't need to carry um, all of your food for the next section for example um, that is a good idea between the person dwelling up and most people just you know they choose the Brooklyn Highway uh, to meet for a food drop um, anyway apart from that I'm doing I'm doing a separate video on food drops and food parcels so bear with me um, as I go along in the next few weeks all right the next thing I want to talk about is when is the best time to hike the big woman track now in WA in summer it is never recommended to go hiking because the likeliness of having a bushfire is extremely high so therefore I would never recommend anyone to go hiking in summer especially not the big woman track okay so every season is also different. The best way to do the Happy Bowman Trek is between May and November, but every season has something different to offer. So from May to June is usually the driest and you know, the southern part of the trek will usually be fully dry. So you don't have to um, worry about wetlands and all that stuff. Between June and August is usually the wettest season. And, um, but it's a lot cooler then, so it might be a lot more enjoyable to walk. But take care, nights can be really cold, so take a really good sleeping bag, guys. Alrighty, and my favorite time of the year to do the Bimum Trek is between um, September and November. Why? Because it's wildflower season and I just love taking pictures of those wildflowers, as you already know. <laughs> but it also slows you down, just, um, just consider having a bit more time when you hike during that period. Um, it's also the time that snakes come out or start to come out, so be wary of that. And there might also be a lot more water on the trek because it's just after uh, we had all the rain in winter, okay? So it depends what you want. But these are the things that you need to, you know, uh, consider when you're considering when to hike the Bimbo Trek. All right, then quickly, which direction do you need to hike? Well, you can do it both ways, north to south or south to north, it doesn't matter. But most people in winter go from south to north because you can walk towards the warmth and in um, like September November most people walk like north to south because in the south it might be a little bit cooler and then by the time they get south it's warmed up a little bit more okay because in six to eight weeks a lot can change weather wise and in autumn as well it's usually from south to north that most people go but it really doesn't matter it's all up to you alrighty then I want to talk about the different sections of the track so the Biberman track is about 1000 kilometers long um, but there's a total of nine sections and every section starts and ends at a trail town so it's a really good time to stock up on food on supplies or pick up your parcels if you have sent them okay so i will do a video about the different sections as well um, but for now i'm just going to give a quick overview so we have per to dwelling up which is 211 kilometers and takes you about i know between 10 to 13 days depending on how fast you travel um, and then from dwelling up to Kali will take you about seven days from Kali then you go to bailing up which is about 86 kilometers and I think I did about five days on that stretch then uh, you've got bailing up to Donnelly River which is a short section of 58 kilometers and Donnelly River is not exactly a town but it's like a little village but they do have certain supplies but you can always send a parcel to them if you want then we have Donnelly River to Pemberton which is also a very beautiful section it's 109 kilometers to death to there then we have Pemberton North Cliff which is which I would 100% recommend to any beginner um, it's 59 kilometers and it takes about three days then North Cliff to Walpole is about seven days so a whole week um, and that is 142 kilometers and then the final sections are Walpole to Denmark at 126 kilometers and then we've got uh, Denmark to Albany which is like the final stretch uh, 85 kilometers and um, yeah so when you get to the section North Cliff Walpole you will uh, start seeing the ocean and uh, travel along the beaches and stuff um, anywhere north of that you're pretty much in a forest or if you're going to the most northern section um, then you're most likely in the red gravel area as I call it okay so every section has a different landscape it's um, it's a total totally different environment in my opinion 
um, so it depends what you like as well I, I personally love being in the forest so that's why I recommend Pemberton to Norcliffe but that's just a personal choice okay now if you're doing the whole way um, at every town there's facilities and if you want to know what facilities are available again go to the bibblementrack.org.au website and you will see a lot of the uh, resources that the town has um, but most most of the smaller towns have like a smaller IGA uh, supermarket where you can stock up on hiking foods um, not all of them are um, prepared for a lot of hikers so that is why I actually send my parcels in advance um, all of the towns have a post office so that's that's the easy way just pick up your parcel and go um, but if you want to support the locals which I highly recommend as well just you know stock up on supplies in town um, I usually don't send gas canisters I'm not sure if you're allowed to or not um, and someone told me yes but then other people tell me no so I didn't do that um, so the gas you can always get at visitor information centers or your, your usually your usual camping stores but most of the time IGA has them as well okay and if you can't find it try the caravan parks because they usually have some supplies as well all right for me in my experience the gas canisters were the hardest to get and uh, so if you can send them send them in advance so one of the last things i want to talk about is accommodation along the track okay so the when you're hiking the bivouac track you have the luxury of coming across um hikers huts let's say and they're basically three-sided shelters where you can sleep on uh, platforms with your sleeping bag and sleeping mattress or you can pitch your tent in the in the campsites provided so I mean it's um it's very nice to have those huts and I will do a video separate to to give you like an overview of the facilities that they have but pretty much there's a toilet a water tank and there's tables and to eat and there's uh, sleeping platforms they usually cater for between 8 to 16 people um, but there's also campsites around so what I would um, suggest or recommend is I would always bring a tent with me just in case when the hut is full you can still look for a campsite and I have been at several huts where it was super super busy even the tent sites were all occupied and I had to like maybe wiggle my, send, my tent in like a new camp spot which is um, not recommended at all um, but I was happy that I had my tent because otherwise I don't know I don't know I would have slept on the table or something you know so that is definitely um, a must do always bring your tent now if you're going out of the season like in winter um, you might find yourself alone in many of the huts but yeah I would still recommend a tent you never know if you get lost and you need a shelter for the night at least then you have you you're protected or you have some kind of shelter when you get to the trail towns there's plenty of accommodation from campgrounds to um to luxury accommodation obviously um so it's it's up to you whether you want to spend that extra money in town um i usually stay in the caravan parks um, but i do get a room or a cabin uh, just to refresh um just to get refreshed and also to stock up my my backpack for the next section it's just an extra luxury really um, but yeah there's plenty of facilities and there's something for every budget um, I'm, I'm working on a guide that gives you all the different uh, accommodation options uh, in the trail towns so then um, yeah it will make it easier for you guys but on the website as well it just on the Bibbleman Trek website as well you have so many different resources um, so it makes it really easy to plan your hike um, a lot of the accommodation providers will also be hiker friendly and always keep out for the sign hiker friendly business so there are huts where you can have fire and then there's like a, um, a fire pit provided so always respect to make fires within that fire pit um, I've got a, a separate video about you know what to do or what's um, the hut etiquette is uh, you know when you sleep in those huts or when you stay at those huts um, but pretty much the the biggest one in, in WA is definitely about fires so never leave a fire unattended and please don't leave when the fire is still going and also respect the no fire bans because uh, a lot of the huts from Mount Chance which is um, just before Walpole um, 
So when you get to Man Chance, all the huts south have a, a total fire ban. So please respect that. Alrighty, so the last thing I want to know, what I want to talk about is obviously the resources you need for the planning. The best site to get information from is on the Bibelman Track Foundation website, which is bibelmantrack.org.au. And you can find all information about how to plan your trip, what sections there are, um, like what, what you need to know about the accommodation, access points, you know, they have a wide range of resources. And you can also book a session with them to like, you know, um, get familiar with hiking multi-day hikes or get familiar with navigation. There's plenty of workshops that you can sign up for and uh, I'm not being sponsored by them. I really think that they are a very good resource and they're doing a lot of good work for the Bible and Trek and they also get their sponsor sponsoring or their funding uh, from like the amount of numbers that walk the track every year um, and you know, the merchandise that they sell for example so it's always good to support them um, because without them the Bibbulman track would probably be a lot less maintained so the Bibbulman track website is also the best resource to buy your maps and guidebooks um, and um, yeah to pretty much plan your hike but then there's also the Facebook groups so there's a few uh, Bibbulman track Facebook groups which I will link in the description below that you can follow and um, there's lots of people that have done the walk before, there's lots of people that are planning to walk the Bibbulman Trek and so it's a really good resource and a really good community um, to be involved in. Um, your resources and the planning, like how are you going to plan your Bibbulman Trek, you know. So there's um, eight maps that you can purchase and nine guidebooks, so the guidebooks give you an idea uh, what you will see along the trail and they're also from the Bibbulman Trek Foundation and always check the section by section guide on updated trail conditions so you will always have to check um, at the nearest trail town um, what the conditions are going to be like in for the next section you know so it might be that there's diversions so make sure that you know about them before you set off so like i said the community the facebook community is pretty well um, organized as well when it comes to giving advice so definitely check them out and um, in terms of planning your food for in particular so um, what I did was I made an Excel sheet, an Excel spreadsheet. Well, I actually got it um, from someone on Facebook. So when you when you have an Excel spreadsheet like that, it will give you an idea of how many kilometers you need to walk every day, and then you can plan how many days you will um, spend between each section. And um, honestly, it's also very important to assess your capabilities after every section because you might walk a lot faster when you've done 400 kilometers already or you might be injured um, and you might need to take things slow or you want to take a bit more time so just plan every section separately so then you have a nice overview of how many days it will take you and also try and plan in uh, some zero days and a zero day is pretty much when you don't walk um, I had a zero day in Collie so I stayed at um, a nice uh, accommodation spent the day in Collie to recharge my battery so I would definitely recommend having a few zeros along the way um, or you can do a Nero, which is a nearly zero day, so you walk only a few kilometers uh, that day. So then you give your legs a little bit of a rest, okay? I know there's people out there that want to do it as fast as possible, um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I really like to enjoy and appreciate uh, while I'm out there, because I'm, I'm really out there to disconnect from everyday life and reconnect with myself through nature. And by the way, that's also my slogan for my new hiking business, so I'm planning, I'm setting up a business to rent out hiking gear. Um, at the moment, um, well, it's partly finished, um, so it's called Hiking Escapes. I will link, I will put a link on to my website um, at the end of this video. So if you want to check that out, definitely do that. So I'm renting out hiking gear for everyone who wants to do a multi-day hike. And um, yeah, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. I've got the right gear for you. And I also want to plan like multi-day hikes um, to empower women, especially, to go out there solo um, or with one or two other women, you know, but then, you know, just to, to give you that confidence to go, go out and explore, really. All right, so this was a very long video and I can't believe how much information I have to give you guys because this is, there's a lot of planning to do when you want to hike the Bibbulmann Trek. I really hope I covered a lot of it and uh, over the next few weeks I will do 
specific videos where I can specifically help you with food preparation, with parcels, with um, accommodation, with the different sections as well. So we're going to dive a lot deeper into how I planned my hike and um, yeah, that, that will be very good for you guys as well. Um, I really hope this video has helped you at least a little bit. If you have any questions, please comment down the bottom and um, yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!